For decades, the United States has seen a rise in social issues ramping up their influence. This was exaggerated by the pandemic as it gave way to more research and activism toward government systems, and 2022 was no exception. When the people feel like they aren't heard, they will do whatever it takes to be listened to in any way they can. On April 22, 2022, a Buddhist monk would set himself ablaze in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. The following day, after being airlifted to a hospital, he would succumb to his injuries. His name was Wynne Bruce, and he was 50 years old. To a random passerby, this would seem like the type of decision someone with serious mental health issues would take part in. But upon further inspection, it is clear that there was a message to be sent through this intense action. Immediately after the ordeal, investigators would confess that they had not found a manifesto or note around the location that would give them an ideal motive. Even people who knew Bruce were a little conflicted as to the means of his death. A friend of Bruce, named Kriti Kanko, said on Twitter that the decision was a fearless act of compassion. However, fellow teachers of Kanko at the Rocky Mountain Ecodharma Retreat Center would insist that they had no knowledge of his intentions and would have tried to stop him otherwise. Brad Warner, a Soto Zen teacher and author, claimed that it was a suicide in a countering response to Kanko's tweet. But Bruce's father himself stated, I agree with the belief that this was a fearless act of compassion about his concern for the environment. And this can further be proven as the phenomenon isn't a random write-off in the history books. On June 11, 1963, a Vietnamese monk named Thuc Quang Duc set himself alight in the busy streets of what was then known as Saigon, now Ho Chi Minh City. More than 300 other monks and nuns marched down the street in order to participate in the ceremony. He was wearing a saffron robe and sat in the lotus position on a cushion. Two other monks doused him in gasoline, where afterward, Quang Duc would strike a match and light himself on fire. To be burned alive is an extremely painful experience. When a body warms up from the heat, the fat beneath the skin dissolves and causes flaking. Smoke and lack of air can cause asphyxiation, heated gases harm the respiratory tract, and major organs, which are made up of muscle and fat, will burn. Blindness can be caused by the pain of the fire, as well as hearing loss from hearing the burning flesh hitting the walls of the skull. There are many methods as to how fire can kill you, and how violent, and in this particular situation, it seems as though he was choosing all of the above, thus marking the deliberacy of the act. A journalist who was present at the time of the burning stated, Flames were coming from a human being. His body was slowly withering and shriveling up, his head blackening and charring. In the air was the smell of burning flesh. Human beings burned surprisingly quickly. Behind me, I could hear the sobbing of the Vietnamese who were now gathering. I was too shocked to cry, too confused to take notes or ask questions, too bewildered even to think. As he burned, he never moved a muscle never uttered a sound, his outward composure in sharp contrast to the wailing people around him. After the fire was out, the monks placed him in a coffin and carried him off. Quang Duc's protest was against the persecution of Buddhists from the South Vietnamese government. At the time, it was run by Catholic President Ngo Dinh Diem, whose discriminatory policies consisted of a ban on flying the Buddhist flag, unfair detentions, and general second-hand treatment of Buddhists in relation to the Catholics. Seven other monks would follow in his steps, but seemingly to no avail, as Diem was not hastened because of it. Jumping back to 2022, Bruce's portrayal of this practice shows striking similarities. 
People reported that he did not move, and the fire raged for 60 seconds until it had been extinguished. A bystander claimed that the only sound they heard was of a passerby screaming about the man on fire. He was sitting upright on the marble plaza with his legs stretched out in front of him. To a casual observer, this would seem like a completely random occurrence, but with using the evidence and lining it up, it is clear that he was protesting climate change. The day in which he chose to perform this harrowing act is completely deliberate, as April 22nd is Earth Day and marks the birth of the modern environmental movement in 1970. This also aligns with the method used as lighting oneself on fire and being silent about it is a great parallel to the philosophy of climate activists comparing societal feelings toward the concept of climate change. Further supporting this is the fact that earlier that year, climate activist and scientist Peter Kalmus locked himself to a J.P. Morgan bank in protest to carbon emissions and fossil fuels. They're not being listened to. I'm willing to take a risk for this gorgeous planet. For my sons. And we've been trying to warn you guys for so many decades. Now we're heading towards the and we've been being ignored. The scientists in the world have been being ignored. And it's got to stop. We're going to lose everything. And we're not joking. We're not lying. We're not exaggerating. This is so bad, everyone, um, that we're willing to take this risk. And more and more scientists and more and more people are going to start joining us. This is for all of the kids of the world, all the young people, all of the future people. This is so much bigger than any of us. It's time for all, all of us to stand up and take risks and make sacrifices for this beautiful planet that gives us life, that gives us everything. I don't know what else to say. We have to stop this fossil fuel industry. We have to stop the financing of fossil fuels. We have to stop new fossil fuel projects. We don't have any carbon budget left. Before Bruce went through with it, he replied to a Twitter post on climate change and commented, 4-22-22, with a fire emoji at the end. One of the most heartbreaking things about this is that self-immolation is not a rare form of protest. In fact, it happens constantly. It just is never portrayed enough in the media. When he was 18, Bruce got severely injured in a car crash, which obstructed him from joining the military. He had retained a traumatic brain injury and struggled to learn new skills quickly. Before that, he participated in cross country and became varsity his sophomore year and eventually co-captain. He had a love for nature and became involved in a science club in high school. Marco de Gaetano, who met Bruce in the 1990s, stated, Wynn seemed to have an affinity for people who needed help, and recollected a time when he was kind to a church member with mental illnesses when everyone typically distanced themselves. Wynn Bruce seemed like a very passionate spirit with a kind heart. The fact that his death could have been prevented if the system set in place listened to the cries is stomach-churning, and people continue to protest and fight every day. I hope that everyone who knew him can recover from their loss and be inspired by his practices so that his death was not in vain. Climate change is a very real issue, and as more protests are popping up around the world, it is very easy to get carried away with criticizing certain tactics that activists may use to get their point across. So as a disclaimer, remember that when things like this happen, governments will often take the opportunity to plant people as activists to do more outlandish things so that more people will disagree with the activists and side with the other party. And with so much happening in everyday life, it can be difficult to create enough buzz in order to instigate change. Having conversations is the most critical part in moving forward, and it really is unfortunate that it happened in this way. I will leave a link to Calmus's website and to other climate sites for donations. <laughs>